Hey everybody, and welcome to Hope for the Moment. Today's segment is Where Can I Find Truth? And uh, we're looking at another uh, two-part session here, so we'll start off today, and then you'll be able to catch the rest of it on Thursday. Uh, but yeah, so where can I find truth? Um, is anyone else getting a, a little bit tired of all of the information that we're getting uh, in regards to uh, this whole coronavirus and everything that's going on? And sometimes it seems like we get a little bit overloaded, uh, especially nowadays, though. It seems like it can be hard to find out, uh, you know, what is true, um, what is true about certain things. And depending on uh, which news station you watch, you know, whatever you're watching on TV or uh, wherever you go for news, uh, whichever one you watch, you're going to be finding differing views uh, on what uh, what they believe to be true about this pandemic and everything that's going on. Uh, apparently now, everybody on Facebook are, uh, you know, experts in, in news and science and all of these uh, things. And even though they're all experts, everybody, uh, a lot of people on Facebook disagree with each other. And so they're giving their uh, kind of their views, their opinions there, but they don't all line up. Um, family members, even probably within your own family, um, you know, they have differing opinions on kind of how they view this whole pandemic and everything that's going on. Even the person you come across at the grocery store uh, is probably willing to give you their two cents as far as, uh, you know, what their view on everything that's happening is. So you've got all of these views, all of these opinions, all of this, these, you know, this information that's coming at us from so many different aspects. And you have to ask yourself, so who do I believe? You know, what, what, you know, which person am I going to, am I going to believe? Which news TV station am I going to believe? What, you know, article that someone shares on Facebook am I going to choose to believe? You know, where, where do I go? Um, where do you go if you want to find the truth? You know, and unfortunately, we don't have a news uh, channel that's called The Truth TV. You know, it's airing f the facts only. I don't know if that is an actual TV station. I'm sorry, but I, I don't think it is. Uh, you know, but we don't have one of those that, that promises and that follows through where we know that everything that comes across the station uh, is only facts. There's no opinions. There's no bias. There's no nothing. It's the truth only. Everywhere we go, though, we have to be on guard with the information that we hear since we, since we know that this person says this, this other person says this, they don't line up, so then what am I going to choose to be true? Uh, so we're on guard with the information that we're uh, soaking up with what we're reading, with what we're uh, choosing to listen to, and we have to use discernment to decide whether we're going to believe that or not. Uh, so we're on guard, and, and we're asking ourselves, is this true? Uh, so someone shares an article, you know, is this true? Or how do I know that it's true? Is there some place that I can go that I can fact check and see whether this is true or not? And the place that I go to fact check, you know, how do I know that that is true? Uh, you know, and where does it end? Is, you know, do you feel like your head is spinning yet? And uh, maybe that you've gotten to the point where I get sometimes and you're just kind of you're fed up with all of the information, with all of the articles, with all of the the news headlines and everything that's out there, and you're like, you know what, I just want to shut it all out, and I want to forget all of this, and I want to just step back and just be away from everything that's going on. Uh, that would be nice if we could do that, but unfortunately we can't do that uh, because we're in it. Yeah, you know, we're living in it. We're seeing everything that's happening, um, and as, as hard as you try to get away from the from the different news media outlets social media whatever it is uh it's there and you can't even you can't even go to the store without uh, being inundated with some form of it so you can't just stick your head in the sand and you can't just hide from it all until everything blows over so what do you do uh you know where do you turn to where do you go next i want to take a look in nehemiah uh today in the bible and account of of what nehemiah did and i want to utilize this uh, to kind of help give us a little bit of guidance of where we go, uh, you know, to find truth. Um, so in case if you're not familiar with what's happening here, uh, so we're in the Old Testament, Nehemiah, and I'll give you a little bit of background as far as what's going on. Nehemiah, um, he is a, he's a Jew, but he is, he is in a different area now, and he is a, a cupbearer to a, to a foreign king, so he's out of his, his normal land, and he gets word of what's happened uh, to Jerusalem about the walls being torn down, all this thing, and, and what his brothers and sisters, his, his Jewish 
uh, friends what they're going through and everything. Um, and so he decides that uh, it's there's something that he needs to do, and he goes before the king. And you know, for the sake of time, you can't get in all that. But even just his approach to the king, it's an it's an incredible uh, account of what happened. Um, so he believes that God, you know, wants him to go and wants him to help uh, the Jews to rebuild the walls here. And so he. He gets the favor of the king, and you know, in, in a great amount. And but we can't get into all that. But he get, he gets there. Uh, he has the transportation to get what he needs. Um, he's got uh, resources that are provided as well. And he gets to Jerusalem. He surveys everything out to see, uh, you know, kind of how bad the damage is, what all needs to be done. He takes his time, thinks through the approach, and begins to get everyone on board. Well, everyone that is that's in that area uh, that wants to rebuild the walls here, uh, but then he runs into some op- some opposition, and so I want to I want to kind of pick up then in chapter four here as we start to see this opposition as we start to see these different sides that are coming in, uh, because he's got opposition from some men that don't want the walls to be rebuilt, and so and that kind of causes this cascading effect that leads. Uh, to where we're at. So in Nehemiah chapter 4, I'm going to read verses 7 through 12 here. So verse 7, it says, But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that uh, the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and that the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry. And they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. And we, and so this is Nehemiah's talking, and we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. So that's that's some of the opposition that's coming from the enemies. But now in verse 10, he says, In Judah, it was said, the strength of those who bear the burdens is failing. There is too much rubble. By ourselves, we will not be able to rebuild the wall. So here is kind of some of the complaints that's coming from within. And then it goes back in verse 11. And our enemy said, they will not know or see till we come among them and kill them and stop the work. And back to the enemies there. Then verse 12, we go back to the Jews. At the time, the Jews who lived near them came from all directions and said to us 10 times, you must return to us. And so we have this process here. Nehemiah is trying to do what he believes is right, what he believes is the true and right thing to do. But he's got from all sides uh, these differing views, these differing opinions as far as what he needs to do. But he believed that God wanted uh, him to rebuild the walls here in Jerusalem. Uh, But now the enemies are telling him, don't do it. It's wrong for you to do this. And if you do proceed in this, then we're going to come in and we're going to start killing. Uh, and then in Judah, they're saying, it's too much for you guys to handle. It's too much for us to handle. It's not worth pursuing. And then the Jews in the surrounding areas, you know, they're saying, stop, guys. There's too much danger going on. Just leave. Just come, uh, you know, come out to to be safe uh, from your enemies. So all of this is is kind of coming into Nehemiah's head. He's, he's got all these different approaches, all these different views, all these different opinions, so many perspectives. And... Now Nehemiah has a decision, and how would he decide between all of these different truths? Uh, you know, because from each person that is coming, that is their truth. That's what they are presenting as truth. And so he has to decide what the right approach is uh, for them in regards to proceeding with building, or what do they need to do? So to find that out, you're going to have to come back uh, and catch the end of uh, the end of this segment on Thursday. Um, now, you know, some of you are familiar with this account, so you kind of already know the end of this story. And even if you weren't, you could just open up your Bible to Nehemiah and continue reading to find out. Uh, obviously, the end of the story is they do rebuild the walls. But what we're going to focus on on Thursday is how did Nehemiah get to that point of deciding that that was the right way uh, to move forward, of deciding that that was the truth uh, that he needed um, to, uh, to pursue during that time. So that's what we're going to look at on Thursday. Uh, Thanks again for uh, tuning in to our Hope for the Moment uh, segment today. Uh, Looking forward to getting closer to that point where we can get back together again. So we're looking forward to that um, and just excited uh, to see you all again shortly. Uh, So continue being safe out there and continue living in hope.